Hi, it's me again. Um, thank you all for waiting. Um, I wanted to continue my story and uh, recap from yesterday. Where I left off yesterday, um, I had just finished closing on my house. We were waiting for funding. We were packed. Um, all we were living out of boxes. I was getting ready to move to New York City, to my new apartment, to my new job, my new career uh, in the, the real estate business. Um, I, I had resigned given my notice um, to the only career that I ever knew in the electronic payments industry. So um, all these good, positive things were going on. Um, I was feeling good. I was feeling scared. I was feeling nervous. Uh, I was seeking reassurance uh, from friends and family and, and getting that reassurance and, and um, just all good things going on. So that brings me to Chapter 3. Chapter 3, Apartments, Subways, and Pretzels. Oh my. Okay, so first I want to bring you, first place I want to bring you to in this chapter is my responsibilities. My responsibilities as Vice President of Operations um, for this new real estate venture is to find a new office, one that's expanding, uh, one that's expandable so that you can grow with it. Um, hire new employees, uh, furnish the office, uh, re redesign the website uh, with all of our new um, ventures um, that are, are expansions, come up with new logos, uh, business cards, hire new employees, um, everything that is in, you know goes along with um, st starting up a new office and ex uh, expansion and growth of a company. Okay, so one of the first things that Mr. X had me do was look for office space. So, went out to a real, realtor, a commercial realtor, and I'm sorry if you could see this. He listed for me a, a list of available office spaces in Manhattan. So, I gave him the square footage requirements. He came up with a list. When I flew out to New York City, my um, apartment wasn't ready yet. Uh, apparently, there had been a flood that had um, a, a vindictive tenant that had stopped up her ex-husband's toilet with cement, which clogged up the whole A-line, um, which was being fixed, and the whole even the the, um, the down right down to the water heater and the boiler all needed to be replaced. So, as luck would have it. My new apartment that I was supposed to move in, that the company owned the building, was under renovations. So, at this current time, I was staying with family on Long Island. I was learning how to commute on the train. I was taking subways into New York City to meet with the real estate agent to go to the different um, office locations, the, the potential office locations, um, take pictures, discuss price per square foot. Um, this took, you know, quite a bit of time from the agent who would always put a packet together, uh, make appointments at the buildings, um, took my time to go in there and, and to review all the, um, the different office spaces and uh, compile a list of pros and cons for each. Uh, again, it was my job at this point, so uh, when I, I had started this new, this new venture, this was the first thing that I had set out to do. So now we're involving another real estate agent, a commercial real estate agent, and um, company uh, building managers who are showing us the spaces. So this is taking up a lot of my time, um, commuting in and out from Long Island because my apartment is being renovated. And my custom company car is not ready yet. So that voice, that red flag is really screaming at this point. Okay, you just quit your job. You left your career. You did all of these things, and you're in New York with no apartment, no car. This is scary, because these were things that you were supposed to have, and you don't. But they're coming. They're coming. Okay, stay positive. Don't freak out yet. You just started. So then my next chore was to get some estimates from Mercedes-Benz for a custom sprinter. Because in New York City, if you're going to the um, 
taking your very upscale, very um, high-priced real estate clients to view different apartments and, and different condos and different places in New York City. Um, you want to be able to drive them in style. As I mentioned, um, my uh, C CEO, Mr. X, um, th there were disabilities there, so we needed something that was easily accessible, yet um, very comfortable for our clients. So Mr. X asked me to go out and get quotes on customized printers, uh, sprinters rather, Mercedes-Benz sprinters to get around in the city. So I had a couple of quotes from Mercedes-Benz. Some of the requirements included um, a custom Maybach ceiling, white lightning trim, walnut wood trim, uh, LED lighting, white lighting, power blinds, manual blinds, rear lift, custom table, uh, sliding door, wall behind driver and passenger, custom bench seat, air conditioning, 60,000 BTU, um, custom console, Alpine audio system, new track vision, satellite TV, cell phone booster, the list goes on and on. So this was the list that I worked with two different Mercedes-Benz dealers and custom car dealers to make this happen for Mr. X. So I had um, two to three different dealers, I think it was three, um, creating estimates, making phone calls to their vendors to see if this can be done. This was very serious. This, this needed to be done. Now we involved someone else. Then we narrowed it down to an office. It was temporary, but we decided, or I decided, as the vice president of operations, that it made more sense um, budget-wise to temporarily take a space and see how the expand, how fast or how quickly we expand our, our staff, our business, our clientele before we commit to a 24 to 36 month lease that we might be biting off more than we can chew and we don't really need right, off, right out of the gate. So uh, we found a short term lease. Um, I found a short term lease. We negotiated that lease. That lease was signed for three months at the cost, I'm sorry, for two months at the cost of $25,300. So that was our short-term lease. That was giving me time to ramp up staff to purchase office equipment uh, before we accrue the expense of a long, longer-term lease, a longer commitment. Uh, office furniture, office modeling, all the stuff that goes into um, a larger office, uh, cubicles, furniture, telephone systems, um, you know, servers, stuff like that. So that would have been a much more expensive, much more long-term commitment. And at this, at this starting junction, we didn't really need that yet. So this was our short-term lease for 20, about $25,000 um, for a couple of months. Then, my next order of business was to hire employees. Because as it stands, I have some a couple of real estate agents that are seasoned. I have a real estate broker who's my boss. Um, I'm trying desperately to learn the real estate business, um, you know, the ins and outs and, and how it works and, and uh, you know, that agents have to be connected to a broker and, and uh, the different systems that the brokers use um, to, for their listings, or their, as a seller's agent, as a buyer's agent. Um, so their licenses, how that works, um, how they get the licenses have to be registered with the broker. So I start um, re realizing that, and, and then Mr. X has other um, requirements. He needs somebody to help him uh, with his organization, with his filing, with things that um, I couldn't get done and do and be out looking at office space, and be out purchasing furniture. So I knew that right away he told me there was a need for him to have an administrative assistant. So one of the first things I did was called a dear friend of mine who had the skills and the, no, the, the, the wants to start a new endeavor and help somebody make something great um, and expand and grow and was very excited to be part of it and they left with my recommendation my word was on this my name they left their job 
to come work with me for Mr. X as the very first new hire and admin, his administrative assistant. Um, they were put on the, the ADP payroll. They were giving blue, given Blue Cross Blue Shield benefits. And they left their longtime job to come start their new adventure because they trusted me. So now there's two of us and Mr. X and my agents. Then we need more agents because in business, if, you want, if you're spending money, you need to be making money. The only way to make money was to have more agents on the street. So we recruited two more agents. One of them was a friend of mine who I knew in, from the real estate, uh, was in real estate, who came from Long Island with her license, with the promise of um, being having access to a, a, the broker book that my Mr. X, my boss, had um, built for himself with high-end uh, New York City Manhattan clients. So it was an enticing offer based on my word. She came in, she interviewed, based on my recommendation, she was hired and she moved her license over to Mrs. X, Mr. X's brokerage. So at this point, um, I am thinking that this is this is it, this is my job and, and I'm doing it and I'm, um, I know what to do and I got this. So I'm using resources and connections that I have to help Mr. X expand his, his business because that's what he hired me to do. Then, of course, you can't have an office without any office equipment. So then we go out, or I go out, to Apple because now we all need, the, the agents need, need laptops, the office needs laptops, we need equipment because we can't do our jobs without contracts and forms and printers and um, computers can't have an office with nothing in it and agents that aren't doing anything. So I go out to Apple and I get an estimate. It's a low estimate. Um, we were accounting for maybe about 10 agents in the beginning in the, um, the, the agent pool to, to ramp up to that. So the estimate for Apple came to about $17,000. I worked with this Apple agent in Soho in New York City. Uh, for quite some time, back and forth, negotiating until we can't, got to $16,900 for the initial office equipment, um, which we purchased. Then I ordered the printers from Hewlett Packard because we needed to be able to print contracts. We needed to be able to scan documents. I ordered the printers for the offices, which came to $820. So... I have an office full of, or not full of, with new employees. I have a new administrative assistant. I have a new, um, two new agents that came on board. A third one possibly coming on board. Um, she's not sure, you know, if she wants to come on board yet or not. So she's in and out of the office, um, I guess, testing the waters. I have new office equipment. I have a short-term lease. Um things are going good. I mean, everything is, I'm um, doing everything just the way it's supposed to be. Then we need new logos. I create the new logos, new business cards. I create the new business cards. I create a new website for Mr. X. I, of course, have resources. I've been doing this for a long time. I call my contact, my uh, graphic artist, web designer that I've worked with for years, who does an amazing job for me, and I trust him. And I call him and I say, listen, I'm, I'm at this new company now. I explain the story to him. I said, it's a great opportunity. Here I am. I'm in New York City, um, and I need a new website, and you're the guy. So uh, I need for you to help me um, get me set up on a server so that we could build this website and make it great. Okay, I will. I need for you to give me an estimate so I can get it to my boss so that we can approve it because I really, I'm, you know, I need this website and you're the guy for the job. So my web designer gives me an estimate. It gets approved and we work on a website. We build a website. Now, the way my web designer works because he has been working with me for so long and, and you know, we have an, uh, an excellent professional relationship is I get invoiced. Yeah, I get invoiced after the job. So there's no money up front. So now 
based on my word, my reputation, and my working relationship with the web designer, he sets out and we set out and we take his time to find us the perfect website that pulls in listings, that um, tracks um, you know, users with uh, you know, all kinds of uh, SOEs and, and, and stuff where we can be able to follow up on people that are looking through our listings. So I have now involved yet another person based on my reputation who has started working on the website project for me. Um, and we're working in this New York City temporary short-term building, building this company. I still don't have an apartment. I still don't have a car. So after uh, three weeks of getting all of this done, getting um, the staff ramped up and, and amped up and ready to go, I um, it's time for me to go back. I have to go back for my 10 days. I have my children. They're waiting for me in North Carolina. Um, my younger daughter is getting ready to graduate high school that year. She's, she's just about graduated. So I go back. For, I, uh, I fly back for my 10 days in North Carolina, and then I go back again for, you know, it's, I'm supposed to go back. Before I go back, I ask Mr. X, how are the renovations coming? Because I can't stay with my family forever. Granted, they would, my family is the best, and I love them to death, and they would let me stay with them for as long as I needed to. But that's not the point. The point is you don't take advantage of that, and you don't take it for granted. You don't just say, hey, I'm moving to New York City, and I got no place to stay, so I'm going to stay by you for an indefinite period of time. Uh, you know, that's that's not considerate, and that's just not how things work. So I asked Mr. X for an, uh, an update, and I still don't have the funding on my house because there are issues with the Patriot Act. Mr. X, his money is tied up um, overseas. And because he has to get it to the United States to wire transfer it, he's having issues with the Patriot Act. So it's going to take just a little bit longer. And he's assured me, my attorneys, um, and my real estate agent that it is going to happen. Um, just that he just needs a little bit more time. Okay, the renovations are almost done. Um, and um, he's working on the car because it has to be. A nice car. I said, you know, it doesn't have to be anything fancy. Um, it, but if I'm going to be staying on Long Island until I can get into New York City, then I'm going to need a way to get around because I'm kind of trapped at my, my family's house right now. So um, he's working on it, but it has to be a nice car because he says, if I'm going to be showing clients properties and I'm going to be using my car, then these are upscale clients that, you know, I have to show up in an upscale car. Okay, good answer. So... I'm going to I'm going home to New York. If in the ten days the apartment's not ready and the car isn't ready, then I don't know if I'm coming back, Mr. X, because nothing's that nothing is what it was supposed to be. I held up my end of the deal, building you a website, found you an office space, got you employees, got you agents. You ha now have branding. You're, you're get, you have your estimates on your sprinters, you have office equipment, you are operational. So I held up my ends of the deal, so you need to hold up yours. Or I'm not sure if I can come back because it's really hard for me to be trapped in my family's house and for me to just expect that my family's just going to, you know, just going to be okay with me just staying there for an indefinite period of time. Um when that wasn't the plan to begin with. So I'll, you know, we'll, I'll be working from North Carolina and, and we'll discuss this again before I make the, the trek back. So at this point, my red flags are screaming at me. What have you done? It's not too late. It's only been three weeks. So it's not too late. Go back, go back, go back. So I go back and I fully intend to stay there in North Carolina because at this point I pretty much called Mr. X on his bullshit and I got you know answers that you know whatever maybe it's true maybe it's not true very possible that it could be true very possible excuse me
however. However, sorry, however, um, as feasible as these explanations may be, the deal was that um, Mr. Rex provide me with these things when um, I came to Manhattan, and they, they're not being provided, um, which makes Mr. Rex a little nervous because I've done a lot for him. I have a contract, and he's not holding up his end of the contract. So at this point, I continue to work from North Carolina. Mr. X continues to ask me if I'm coming back, and I continue to ask him if my apartment's ready and if my car is ready. So he knows pretty much what's coming at the end of this, is if I, if I don't get what was promised in my contract, then what's to make me believe anything else is going to really um, you know, come to fruition. So he, has, he knows and he has the, the idea that at this point, I'm pretty much calling him on his bluff, listening to my gut instinct, and I want to see the things that were promised me or I'm not really so sure that this is going to be where I continue to go. So um, I'm going to leave you there because obviously this went, um, this went on for quite a few more months and for quite a while longer. So um, I will leave you there as to what Mr. X's response was and my new apartment in, in Manhattan in New York City and my new car when I return tomorrow. Thank you and have a great night. Thank you.